This is the video that nobody might see. I love lift printing. I would rather be lift printing. I like this paper for lift printing. Lift printing is just one of those things that is extremely addictive. Once you start doing it, you get sucked in and you lose days and it's fun and it's, yeah. Lift printing is probably my favorite darkroom process. This is a video that I've wanted to make for quite some time just because I don't know, you know, a, a lot of people know about it, but I'm sure there are a lot of, uh, especially younger people maybe that, that just have never really uh, been um, exposed to it. So lift printing for me is a creative process where I can kind of throw out the the rules per se. I don't have to go by a timer. You develop by inspection. So what it is, is it's you heavily overexpose paper and then you develop it in highly dilute lift developer. Um, usually kind of exhausted developer too. And only certain papers will do this. And you develop by inspection versus by time. So what that means is it, you kind of let the process run itself. And that's what I really like about it. It's, it's a little less restricted. Uh, to a certain extent, you definitely have a le less control over the process, but it's just kind of got this cool look that, you know, it, it's very difficult to get any other way. I don't, I don't want to spend too much time getting into the details of what actually is a lift print. Um, there are some, I'll, I'll post some references down below so you can definitely look into that. I kind of want to go through the process that I've been using lately. And my favorite paper as of late is Ilford Warm Tone Fiber Base. The Ilford's a little bit different in the way it, it lists and it's really, really cool and it's really, really predictable. And the developer I've been using is Arista Lift. And I really like this developer. One of the main reasons is probably the price, but I also get really, really cool results on, on this paper. Um, I do have to warn you, I use this um, developer hot, like really hot. Like I kind of feel in the tray and if it feels like hot, like washing your hands hot, that's about where I like it. And with that comes a little bit of a problem over the years, I started getting like headaches when I would go in there. Um, now I have increased my ventilation, but now I still, I, I full on wear a respirator um, because I tend to have my face like right over the tray because you develop by inspection. So I've found that that kind of has solved the headache problem. And plus there's uh, formaldehyde in this particular developer and most lift developers. You definitely want to have good ventilation. If you're using it at room temperature, I, it doesn't really bother me, but when I use it hot, you definitely want to take precautions because the, the fumes get pretty intense. And um, so just a, a warning on that. So that's why I'm wearing a respirator in the dark room. And that's also why I can't really explain what I'm doing in the dark room as I go through. I did take some video of me doing um, this lift print. And also my fans are cranked way up, so it would be really noisy anyways. There's a really wide range of looks you can get with lift printing. Um, you can get a really gritty look. You can get a really uh, delicate highlight. You can get a really delicate soft print overall, or you can kind of go into this split toning or split toned look where the, the shadows are really, really cold and gritty and the highlights are really delicate. And it gives it a really, really cool look that you just really can't get any other way. So the other thing that I want to note is you're going to you're going to set up the trays, you know, you're gonna do a develop, stop, and fix. But now with this particular developer, I mix, it's called Old Brown. And what it is, it's the, the, the developer from the last session I used. And it's, it's usually really exhausted. And then I just top it off to one liter because you lose a little bit. And so I take that Old Brown and I, just put, I mix my developer and I usually go about 50 milliliters of A, 50 milliliters of B, and just put it right in the old brown and that's my developer. And so it's, it's even like hard to see through the, the print. Um, but when you're developing by inspection, you want to have some type of light. And this is just a mag light. So I put a little, I just cut a little diffusion 
disc, uh, like a diffusion material, and then I put a red filter and cut it and, and put it right on there. And it works really, really good. So you can go in, because what you have to do is you have to judge the blacks kind of when you're, when you're looking to see if it's fully developed. So you're gonna want something like this. Um, but yeah, other than that, you're gonna set up the, the negative as you normally would, but you're gonna give it a lot of overexposure, typically two to three stops. So if you had a normal print on, um, you know, Ilford paper, and then you developed it in like Dectal or, or a normal print developer, a good starting point would be two to three stops over. Now, I don't do any test strips lift printing. It took me about, the, on the third print of this particular picture, I, I had a good print. And so, and what that also does is, the more you develop paper in this dilute developer that's like kind of exhausted and, um, you know, really worked over, it basically, it puts more bromide in there as well and that restrains it and it gives it a little bit more of that, that split tone effect. So it's called like ripening the developer. So I typically will just, um, I kind of have an idea of what I normally do. So I put my enlarger on um, focus so I don't use any filtration for this. And then I will, like I started off, I think with like 30 seconds on this one and it was a bit too much. So then I went to like 18, 18 seconds and it was a bit too contrasting and I ended up at like 22 seconds. And that allowed me to, you know, run a couple through and, and get that developer a little bit more primed and then I, I pretty much had it at the, the third um, stage anyway. So then once you expose the paper, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it in the developer and you're just gonna rock it slowly. Like I said, I use this very hot. So once I mix the developer, I put it in the microwave for about two minutes, sometimes three minutes. So it gets really, really hot. And at that point, I definitely wanna have the, the respirator on in, in the dark room. Um, but I also put it on a tray warmer and it's just like a food serving tray warmer. And I have it plugged into a, a GFI and it's covered. So just if you do something like this, just be really careful that you're being careful with electricity and water clearly. And then it, so it keeps the temperature up. Every once in a while, I'll dump the developer back in the graduate and put it back in the microwave for like a minute or two. And the big advantage of having it hot is it, it comes up really, really quick. So I like that about it. And that's just, you know, why I've done it. It's very efficient for me to get a lot of work done quicker. You can use a stronger, you know, um, mixture of lift developer, but it, you, you kind of tend to lose some of the color, but you kind of got to like play with it on your own. Um, another thing I do is I will sometimes add bromide like a 10% bromide, or I've also really started liking this Lith E. Um, it is, it's a restrainer. Green additive cool tone. So it, with the Ilford, it, it kind of gives, it, it promotes like grain clumping and, and it gives a little bit grittier, um, grittier grain in the shadows. And it also makes it a little bit more on the contrasty side, because what happens is, when, when, the de when it's developing, the highlights will start coming up very, very slowly. And then all of a sudden the blacks will start exploding and it's called infectious development. And the more bromide that's in the developer, the more it restrains and holds back the blacks. And then once they s do start, it, it creates more of a split tone effect. So I found this Lith E is kind of interesting. I don't know. It, it's definitely different than just regular bromide because I also use like a 10% bromide solution. But for this one you develop, or you dilute it one to four and then I usually put like two to five mils and you kind of add just a little bit at a time. And it does some really interesting things. Um, so I, I would definitely check this out and then you're gonna want like a 10% bromide solution, just potassium bromide and you can also use like a 10% sodium sulfite to kind of rein things back if the developer starts, you know, doing really, really weird things. Um, you can add a little bit of sulfide and that kind of brings it back over to the normal looking prints. And the bromide's gonna bring it back to looking more gritty and lithy, typically. But everything's kind of um, 
everything's a little bit in perspective to the, the materials that you're using. So then you're just gonna go through and once you see those blacks kind of start to explode, and Ilford's a little bit different too. So it, it doesn't, it definitely does do infectious development and the more bromide you have in there, the more you can see that going on. But it kind of comes up in a really interesting way. And like if you notice here in the, the print that I'm doing, it comes up, it comes up, and it kind of has like the blacks tend to have like a matte finish. And the interesting thing with um, Ilford paper is that for me, I can kind of look and I inspect, and when I think the print looks good, it'll look a little bit flat and a little less contrasty. And then, so I'll kind of eye up a black or an area that I'm looking to get, you know, where I want it, and I'll put it in the stop. I'll put it in the stop bath and that'll stop it. And when you put it in the fix, the blacks just kind of, it, the contrast just kind of explodes. And that's the interesting thing about the Ilford paper that's different from say like Fomatone. Usually when you pull from Fomatone into the stop, it's pretty much you're judging the blacks on how they're gonna be and the blacks don't get a ton more contrast. There is a contrast increase in the fix, but it's usually just the highlights clearing out. So it's, it's an interesting, uh, Ilford's a really interesting paper in that regard. The other thing worth noting um, definitely is that, like I said, I don't use contrast filters. So typically contrast is going to be controlled by exposure and development. So that basically means the more exposure you give the paper, the less contrast you're gonna have in the final image. The more exposure you give the paper and the more dilute and exhausted the developer, the more colorful the final result, typically. So this can really lead up to some really long developing times. If you're using a really, really exhausted developer at normal temperature and you um, really give it a ton of exposure, I mean, you can, you can sit and develop some of these prints for 10, 15 minutes each. And that's really why I like using the hot developer because the, more, the hotter it is, the more active it's gonna be. So one of the things I really like about Ilford's paper is it's very, very consistent. Um, it gives kind of a more neutral image tone, but I've found too, when, it, when you get the Brahma and everything just right, it gives you really, really cool kind of colors and a little bit almost to the like greenish side and it's a really, really cool look. I really like it a lot. And then I also want to thank Bob Carney. Um, I was reading some posts that he had done and he's the one that actually, I started trying Ilford Warm Tone. And then I, I found other photographers that really, really like this for lift printing. He does have a video um, on YouTube and it's very similar to the process I'm describing. And then I also tried his toning process, which I find really, really cool for Ilford because I've, I'd always been told that if you do sepia toning on a lift print, you're basically bringing it back the same as it was because you got in a lift print, you got colorful highlights already. And that I guess that could be the case, but with Ilford, it the, the warm tone paper, when you bleach and redevelop back a sepia, it gives a really, really nice, nice, pretty color. So the, the method for doing that that I use, and again, it's very similar to what um, uh, Bob Carney was doing, is I mix the bleach and then I use a, sulfide, a sodium sulfide toner. Uh, much like the video I showed on the, the sepia toning, and I'll link that video up, but I just use, I use a stronger bleach, I bleach further, then I develop back in the sodium sulfide toner, and then I give it a rinse, and then I tone it in selenium toner, one to nine for about 90 seconds, kind of by eye. And that's what I did for this final print, and I really, really like it, I, look how, I like how it looks. They're just really, really, they're not over the top colorful, but they're, they just got a really pretty tone to them. And between that and kind of being able to control the, the grit and the, the look of it through um, like this Lith E and just Bromide, it, it's really become probably my favorite paper to work with because I can get so much done so quickly and it's really predictable. And also once it's sulfide toned and selenium toned to completion basically, 
it is extremely archival. The thing about some of the other lift prints, they're really delicate highlights and it makes them a little bit more susceptible to um, environmental damage over time. You know, I've, I've had some really good luck, you know, doing different toners like gold toning, but a lot of the times I, I end up not liking the toned ones as much as the original. So that's what I like about the Ilford paper as well. Um, you, you can kind of do a full archival toning and the print just looks amazing. It looks like a really, really cool lift print. So, so let me see what we got here. If I can find that, no. All right, yes. So here is said picture that we developed. This is the print I did after I added five mils of the additive E. And it got a little bit, um, it got a little bit grittier and a little bit more uh, contrasty and punchy. Um, so this is the one that I, I finally liked. And this one was, again, bleached, redeveloped in sodium sulfide, and then also toned in selenium. It is by far one of my favorite darkroom processes. Like I said in the beginning, I just, I've fallen in love with it. It also always used to have this kind of like mystique around it. Someone would be like, oh, I'm lift printing. They'd be like, well, what's that? Um, it's, it's really not that difficult, but it takes time. For me, I don't like to sit and, and have a print come up for 15 minutes. Plus I like really punchy prints. So using a little bit stronger or hot lift it really kind of um, evolved how I like to do this. Now, some people really like really colorful, really lithy, grainy. I mean, you can, you can uh, find some really, really cool results. And sometimes it takes a long time to get those results. Um, with this method, and not so much. You just really overexpose the paper until you, you find a, a happy medium and throw it in there. And these are you know, developing sometimes quicker than a normal print would. Um, and I guess that's another thing I would wanna point out if, if you're gonna try this exact process, when I actually um, get this into the stop and the fix, this paper will kind of have a, uh, a blotchiness to it, but it totally goes away once it's washed and dried. Like there's no blotchiness at all. This is like super clean looking. I also, I've got some old, old, a bunch of um, Forte, it's a Forte paper. It is Forte Elegance. I believe, and that paper would always do that to me. Like I'd have this really cool picture in the in the in the developer or in the fix at that point, and it would have these weird like, you know, it would it would suck something into the emulsion. It would have these weird kind of like stain looking things on it. And what I've found is that after it dries, it looks it, they go away. So always make sure if, if you're getting some kind of funky blotchiness, make sure you dry it first because it might not be a chemical problem. It could just be, you know, something kind of going into the paper because I've noticed that a lot. But here is the final print with me in a gas mask. I thought it was fitting because that's how I look. And this was shot on my Canon A1. If you haven't seen that video, um, definitely check it out. Like I say in that video, I just love I love, love, love printing, uh, lith printing from these style negatives. You know, they're just, um, they're quick, they're fun. If, if you get the right contrast in the negative, it, it becomes a really, really cool thing. So here is an example of a Foma. This is Fomatone paper. Um, and I believe this was also developed in the Arista lith. Um, and this is not toned. So you can see that the colors are a bit more highlighted and you can also see the scale up here. So this was um, printed off of a digital negative. So I actually shot this with uh, a digital camera. Um, and let me see what else I got in here. All right, so this is the same. And this is also Fomatone, which is another paper that's really, really cool, by the way. And it's all usually touted as one that is better for beginners. And I wouldn't necessarily say so. Like these are, I definitely love both these papers for lift printing. If I want to get like into a blue tone like this, this is on the Fomatone and then it's gold toned. And you can get some really, really pretty blues out of Fomatone and gold toner. There's some dusty. 
So this is before the gold toner. This would be before the gold toner. This is after the gold toner. And then, and so this is fully gold toned. Then, so as you can see, the, the colors you can get from this are, are quite, um, quite incredible, really. Then this one is partially gold toned. So, bam, bam, and bam. And there you go. So don't, you know, like those two papers, there's a few others, they're, they're trying to bring a couple papers back. And then I have a ton of papers that I've, I've bought off of eBay, um, gotten them from estate sales, different things like that, that have worked out really incredible. So yeah, give this a try guys. You'll, I think you'll really, really like it. So I hope you enjoyed this video on lift printing. I know it's something that's not covered a ton and it's this old kind of mysterious um, printing method. Here is another one. This is Ilford multi-grade warm tone developed and uh, bleached and toned in selenium and sulfide. Now this is an example of just lith. So this is Ilford just lith the way I explained it and the bromide was just perfect so you got a really really nice color and then the the shadows went nice and grainy. Um, and then I also did some That's the same, this hasn't been toned, this is just a straight lith on Ilford multi-grade paper. I really, really like the tones in this one. Um, and then this was also straight Ilford, Ilford with Arista lith. And this wasn't using the old brown, I just, this was one of the, um, it was fresh developer, but I used quite a bit of additive, um, the E additive, and then I also used a little bit of bromide, so you can see where it gets really, really gritty. Um, so, you know, the possibilities are endless, and I just think that this is a process that a lot of people really, really will enjoy once they get into it. It's always been one of my favorites, and once you start achieving results that you like, that's the most important thing. Like, I, I tend to like more of, I, I really like this look that I get on uh, Ilford. Um, I really, really like it a lot. Once you start playing around with this, you'll, you'll find a subject that, that fits what you want to do with it. And, and the possibilities are just endless. So till next time, guys, please hit the subscribe button. Um, you know, let me, let me know what you think about lift printing in the comments below. You know, I can't wait to make some more videos on um, things like this in different processes. So, you know, keep following along and I'll, I'll see you next time.